Hi folks, Mark here for Dalton Drone and Discovery Zone. Today we're in the Stroud Preserve. It's a 571 acre preserve. They're all privately owned. There's a number of these preserves around here in Pennsylvania and maybe in other states too. Uh, today's a kind of a wet and foggy day. It's actually New Year's Eve. So I had some time on my hands. I thought I'd pop on over here to see how many people were here and to see what kind of wildlife we might see here in the preserve if there's not a lot of people here. Unfortunately, let me turn the camera around here. I think quite a few people had the same idea. Well, anyway, we're going to take a walk here in the preserve and we're going to see what we can see. Uh, I hope at some point to do a video on, on coyotes here in Pennsylvania. Uh, there, are, there are quite a few here. They're very elusive. They're mostly nocturnal. Uh, but that's, that's my ambition is to produce a video uh, of uh, coyotes here on the channel. Now, uh, there's reports here and around the preserve people have called and complained about strange yippings and, and howls here in the preserve. There's apparently a gentleman who lives here to uh, oversee the preserve and uh, he has indicated, yeah, there's quite a few coyotes here, although they are nocturnal and uh, they do make a lot of noise at night, uh, but they are elusive. So we're going to take a walk here. We'll see what we can see. There's a board here for the Stroud Preserve. There's some rules and regulations here. What's sort of interesting is here, you can see it says no motorized vehicles or mountain bikes. So I would love to bring the uh, the e-bike over here, do some riding, it'd be, it'd be a lot of fun. And um, ironically, just on the other side of uh, their board here, the placard is we have a, a bike sculpture. So I'm not sure what that's all about. Let's move into the uh, preserve here. The other preserve that's close by is the Chesland Preserve. It's a beautiful area. I don't remember what the acreage of that is. Probably at least as big as this one here. It's in a very historic area over near the uh, Embryville. Well, actually, just outside of Embryville. Uh, the Stargazer Stone is over there. I believe it's on the. You can actually get to it via path. Uh, where you park at the preserve. The Stargazer Stone was where uh, the uh, Mason and Dixon survey set up their surveying equipment to uh, survey the uh, Maryland-Pennsylvania line back in, I guess it was the late 1700s, I mean mid-1700s. Today I'm testing out my Frog Togs rain gear here. I have not worn this yet. I got it a while ago. It does come with the, uh, the, the pants too, but uh, I just decided to put the top on and try that. I don't think I really need to uh, test the pants out. If it was, unless it was pouring rain, then I might put them on. There's the uh, beautiful Brandywine Creek. As we go over the bridge here, I think the fog adds quite a bit of mystery to this video as I do like to get out and film in inclement weather, although I haven't done it that often. Not pouring rain today, although it might start raining heavily uh, later. Kind of drizzling right now, but it's been foggy all morning. Not real cold. It's probably in the mid to upper 40s. Gonna head up in this direction. We took a left off the main drag. It's quite a bit muddy here. Uh, but I'm hoping to uh, maybe avoid the uh, path that's well traveled and maybe use to choose the one that's less traveled and maybe we'll see some wildlife here. So we'll kind of move up this hill here. You know, but I won't slip and fall flat on my face. This is a pretty steep hill actually. This mud is pretty slippery. I'm going to stay on the, sort of on the side in the grass here so I can get some traction. 
don't really have uh, hiking boots on today. This will give the legs a good workout. We don't have any plans for New Year's this year. We uh, were in Disney World at this time last year celebrating New Year's. It actually was in the Epcot Center. That was a great time. They had parties leading up to New Year's Eve and uh, New Year's Day in all the parks. So in every park you went in, they had something going on. And it was in multiple places in the park too. This is of course Disney World in, in, in Orlando. And uh, uh, for Epcot, for New Year's Eve, they had the uh, fireworks going off in each consecutive country, the larger countries. So one after the other to celebrate New Year's. So it was a really, really neat experience. They had the Harmonious, I believe it was, their show earlier in the evening. I think it was around 8 or 9. Then the grand finale was at midnight with all the parks setting off fireworks, so very cool. Uh, needless to say, this year, we're just taking it easy. We're just hanging at home, nothing much going on. It's The, the weather is gonna be nasty. It's gonna get rainier as the day goes on. Uh, so not the best evening to go out and celebrate New Year's outdoors. If you guys have plenty of New Year's plans, I'm sure a lot of you do, you can Leave your plans in the comments. I'd like to hear to see what everybody's doing for New Year's. <clears throat> of course, in some countries, you might be viewing this video and your New Year's has already happened. So I hope you had a good one, if it has. Saw those hay bales earlier. They do cut. You can see the fields here. This where this grass is cut. There's a cornfield up there. They must have some kind of co-op with local farmers where they, they uh, give them the hay and the corn, I guess. And I don't know what the farmers have to pay in return. But I've seen these giant hay bales in the, the Cheslin Preserve, too. I guess where they cut the grass, they, they bale it all up and they put it in huge stacks. I've been over here once before, but I haven't used this trail. This trail looked like it was a little bit more strenuous, and it is. I'm not really used to climbing hills. I haven't done it in any of my videos for a long time. But uh, I need to get the exercise, that's for sure. Just don't want to overdo it at first. 
be like the guy who goes out to shovel his walk with really deep snow and ends up with a heart attack. So we want to avoid that. So we're just going to take it easy. Boy, look at that down there. The foggy view. You could just make out there's a house over there. I believe it's like the offices. And maybe where the gentleman lives who sort of oversees the, the preserve. Can't really see it. There's a house over there and a barn to the right of it. We've been over there. I believe there are offices in both the barn and the house. Let's see. I want to get into kind of a wooded area. So I see a path veering off, actually the entire path sort of veers off to the right here. The birdhouses you see might be blue birdhouses, or I guess any bird that wants to take advantage of it. My son uh, goes to college. Uh, down at Penn State on the Brandywine campus and they have a program where they actually make bluebird boxes for the uh, Tyler Arboretum nearby oh so we're going back down here would appear hmm you know what I might want to get off the beaten trail here maybe trudge along the woods here I think that's the best chance we, we have of seeing some wildlife. It is hunting season. They do allow hunters in here. The deer, deer population apparently is, is quite large. I believe it's shotgun and archery. I kind of don't expect to be hunters to be out today with the weather. And they usually do not come near the the hiking area, the hit trails, for safety's sake. I probably should have some orange on, but I don't have any orange. I do have a vest, which I probably should have put on. But we'll see. I kind of a little trail going in there. It might be a game trail. A little too overgrown for a guy like me, though. I'm hoping with, with uh, shotgun hunting, hunter press to get pretty close to their prey to hit him with a shotgun and uh, to be sure to bring him down. So I would think that they would see that, hey, I'm a person, not prey. quiet. You can see the corn here, or what's left of the corn husks from the harvested corn here. This is why the deer tend to con congregate here in the areas right along the cornfield. So that's one of their favorite foods. Like something's been eating that corn there, dragging it into the woods. Well, this is a big area. I've only walked a small portion of it before. Walk our, uh, work our way down the hill here.
couple things us uh, videographers are up against is battery life and SD and micro SD card life. Uh, the latter is, is easily solvable just by putting a very large micro SD card, but the battery life isn't. So uh, I do have to turn off the camera and stop the recording every so often just to conserve battery life, but you're always concerned that that'll be the time when the deer runs out in front of you or some other, other animal and you just can't hit that record button quick enough. And that's what happened to me before. So I'll try to do my best here. I do have an extra battery. I have the uh, DJI Osmo Action I'm using today because it's, it's weatherproof. I should have brought the GoPro with me too for a backup. But I do have two batteries for this. So it should be fine. Another drawback of you constantly a video and, and putting it on record is... You have tons of useless footage that you're just going to dump. Which just makes it a lot more difficult because you got to go through all that useless footage when you're editing. But you really hate to turn off that record button because you never know. It's going to jump out in front of you. When I was over at the uh, Emeryville uh, Hospital Complex, the uh, abandoned complex... I was just walking down the road to the, between the abandoned buildings and didn't have the camera record on and a deer just jumped out of the brushes right next to me, scared the bejeebas out of me. Out of nowhere, it was hiding in the bushes. They were literally within 10 feet of me. And of course, the record button wasn't on. So I did not get that at all. Wow, look at that view, folks. This is all grass that they cut. You can see why there's such a large amount of baled hay over there. Let's get down here on this road. It's a little muddy, but we'll walk in the center here. Now, they do research here. From what I read, I think there's the Stroud Water Research. This may have something to do with here. I'll put this on camera so you can read it. So there is a research facility. I don't know where that is. Uh, maybe that's part of the, what's in the offices over there in the, the house in the, in the large barn. You know, maybe there's a separate facility. I do remember, um, so I repair antique clocks as a... Uh, as, as what I do when I'm not, you know, filming videos and working at my part-time job. And years ago, I know there's a gentleman who bought one of those barographs into us. Uh, it had a, um, I think it was a French-style clockworks movement in it that was just dirty and frozen up. You know, we were able to overhaul that movement and, uh, you know, get a functional form. It actually just operated the, the, the graph on a continuous basis so it could can continue to record and he was from the Stroud Water Research Facility like I guess I don't know that, that much about it though we're gonna walk up this way here that area is posted there is that private property or is it just no hunting it might be private property let's see Yeah, I can see from here, so that's not part of the Stroud Preserve. Let's move up this way here. So you're starting to rain a bit harder now. I'm going to put my hood up. Won't want to get my hair messed up. Well, uh, they are really emphasizing this STAY OUT! You are... You assume the risk of equine activities. Uh oh! Huh? 
come back after January 29th. Well, that's interesting. Big old squirrel running around there. In the bushes. Boy, this, uh, this raincoat, this, uh, frog togs gear, man, it is warm. It does have some insulation. It's not just like a plastic bag. I have like a, a fleece on underneath it. And a t-shirt. That's all I have today. And I am actually sweating a little bit. There's somebody's house over there. I guess that's private property. It's like a barn actually. This is nice. I'm the only one here in this section. The people are just sticking to the main gravel road. Not me. I'm in it for the adventure. May not be the smartest thing in the world, but it's what I do. There's such beautiful views from up here that boy I tell you on a nice day I gotta come back here when it's uh nice and clear. I hope the camera can pick up at least something through the fog. I'm gonna turn off the video for now and hopefully nothing jumps out in front of me and I miss it. We'll get back to you in a second. All right, we are back. This looks like an interesting area here, so I thought I'd turn the record back on. Oh, it feels good to get out. Do a little walking. A little hiking. That uh, uphill climb just sort of took a little wind out of me a little bit. Uh, I don't like to talk about any health issues. And I don't really have any major ones. But I did get some bad news with a a heart calcium scan, a CT scan, that, you know, I, I'm at risk for a heart attack, possibly. A higher risk than the, other people with a much lower uh, CT scan, calcium scan. So I had to get out and do more of these hikes. One of the reasons why I uh, put together that e-bike allows me to, to ride the bike and maybe ride it further and sort of adjust the amount of exercise I want using the pedal assist. So I guess I'm not alone. Uh, most Americans seem to, not most, but a lot of Americans seem to have issues later on in life. So nothing to worry about. Just something to be aware of. So I'm, yeah, I, I guess I'm glad I got the, the scan. So I know. I saw the cardiologist the other day and it was sort of interesting, you know, as I talked to him about how nervous I was with the results. He said, believe me, he said, I was just as nervous when I got results that weren't that great either. So, <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it's, it was kind of interesting to, and, and comforting in, in, in a way, I guess, that my own cardiologist results weren't the greatest either. So, I think it's pretty common. To have these issues later on in life i wish i had i wish i was more careful with what i ate throughout my life and i thought i was i was not never a big red meat eater i stopped eating steaks and everything like that like 10 years ago i have an occasional burger that's it but it was the french fries and all that that did it i'm sure Fast food is just too easy, too convenient, and too cheap. So if you're out there and you're young, I just put out that warning. Keep that in moderation. And there's our... Sp no bikes allowed. This would be, a, I guess, a great area to to run a, a, an e-bike or any bike for that matter it's not real stony the off trails here they're just muddy so you do have to wait till you have an extended dry spell but that's not allowed so 
there's plenty of other areas here in the state of Pennsylvania and near me that without bike riding and I tend to get out and do some more bike riding videos. I've done a couple in the past. I've done at least one actually. It's nice that they had these maps here. You are here. Okay. Hmm. Scenic overlook. All right, so we'll go down along Lucky Hill Road. This is what this is. It's over alongside, apparently, right here. It's hard to get lost here. Everything goes loops around and goes back to the to the main entrance is where we came in on a Creek Road there. The reason I called that the Brandywine Creek there, there actually are two tributaries that go into the Brandywine River. There's a west and east tributary. They, they meet up somewhere just south of here. And then it sort of becomes known as the Brandywine River, I believe. But the Brandywine Creek actually flows right next to us, where we live. And it's the eastern tributary. Yeah, see they have these no bike signs here for, I guess, areas that are near road access right there. There's a road access, so if somebody decides, hey, I'm just riding down the road, let me just try this path out. And yeah, they can see the signs here. All right, I'm going to shut the uh, record off here. And we'll be back to you in a second. You can see what happens here when it rains hard. Look at the... Uh, the way the water has flowed down, it's pushed the leaves down with it, sort of washed them away. So hopefully it uh, doesn't start raining really hard before I can get out of here. See how it flows down that way there. Now, which way should we take? The red trail going left, green trail going right. The green trail looks like it would probably head back toward the exit or the main parking lot. Let's go left. What the heck? I need, like I said, I need the exercise. So let's do it. A little house up there. Lucky Hill Road. I tell you, the best time to go out on a hike in any preserve or any state park or anywhere is really early in the morning. Try to get there before it gets crowded. Uh, you're likely to, to see some wildlife at that point. But, you know, toward the as the day goes on, the, toward the end of the day especially, that uh, with everybody hiking the area, most of the wildlife gets scared away. So you're not going to see too much. I love to try to get wildlife on camera. I'm hoping to film bears. I've done so in the past. Uh, I'm hoping to film bears and of course deer we've already filmed on our channel. There's plenty of deer around. Like I said before, coyotes is what I really want to get on video. That's They're so elusive but also fairly prevalent here in Chester County. In other parts of Pennsylvania, especially if you go north. And the holy grail would be to get a bobcat. You know, it's getting kind of muddy here. Uh, get a bobcat on video, but that... Uh, they're, they're really elusive. You'd have to go north. Probably northern Pennsylvania. Maybe up in Stony Valley, which I intend to get back to. Which I've been did a couple of videos up there. Beautiful area, very uh, wild area, and that'd be great to take the e-bike up there and, and ride the trail there. I think it was the Susquehanna and Schuylkill Railroad. So rails to trails. I think it's like 15, 17 miles long from one end to the other. Don't plan on doing that whole thing with the e-bike, but I do plan on getting down. A little further. 
than we did last time with my son using the bike before it was converted to electric. You know, it's really getting muddy here. Ooh, this might not have been the trail to take. Oh well. Yeah, it looks like the water's been flowing down here at one time. All right, it looks drier over here, so that's good. Get past this mud pocket right here. Yeah, it looks much better here. Now I'm gonna turn you back off here. We'll see you in a second. Like we have a little cardinal over there. Floating, there he goes, floating around in the bushes. I haven't seen much by way of wildlife. Uh, I guess with this rain, I didn't think of this, they'd probably be all hunkered down somewhere. It's not real cold, but with the rain, they're probably... I can be out running around, so we'll see what we can see. But like us stupid humans. I see some more cardinals down there on the path. Fortunately, I don't have a zoom on this camera. I don't... My camera that can zoom is really not, not waterproof, so I can't bring that out in the rain. Lots of little birds floating around here. You never know, in that brush you could be hiding deer and foxes. They really do hunker down and they make themselves invisible. And uh, when they are hunkering down or when they don't want to be seen. I thought I heard a woodpecker over there to the left pecking on the trees. Got quite a few of those around here. Yeah, one right at their house there. When I come outside, it keeps yelling at me. I think it's a pileated woodpecker. We have we set out suet. And um, right now we're out of suet. I have to get some more. He gets getting muddy here. Ugh, let me get off the trail. And whenever I come out to the, the place where we hang the suet from, he, he starts yelling. Like he thinks we're going to put Sue in it. it, gets excited. But I, I do have to get some suet so we can actually give him some. Hello. Hello, how you doing? So we're coming out into an open area now. Again. This is sort of a pine grove. Look at all the pine trees here. It's nice because the pine needles tend to really make it easier to walk in the mud. They sort of provide a carpet. But uh, we're running out of pine trees now. So there's the mud. There's more hay bales over there. I'll probably walk right by them. I'm gonna put my hood down here. The rain really isn't that heavy. I'll tell you what, this frog togs rainwear is really keeping me dry and it's really keeping me warm. I am extremely comfortable. No, I forgot to wear my Apple Watch. It would have kept track of my exercise. Oh well.
me a little bit of a climb here. Oh, look. You see these around PA this time of the year. You can make jelly out of these. I forget what they're called. I'll, 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 I'll put it down there on the video when I research it later. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, they're quite common. You can see there's these laying right there and all over. Must be one of these trees here. Maybe this one right here. Very interesting. And uh, they're often on the side of the road. There's another one here. And if you're unfortunate, you'll be at the right place with your car at the right time when one of these things falls and hits the hood or top of your car. It, uh, it happened to me once. It scared the bejeebus out of me because they're big and heavy. They could even dent your car. Not common for it to happen because you have to have just the, the worst luck in the world, but it can. There's more there. I see what looks like horse poop here. So they do ride horses here. I don't, I don't see any horse tracks. I guess they haven't done so recently. Oh, look at that open vista there. Of course you can't see much with the fog. Getting kind of muddy here. I've added a few things to my, uh, a couple of items to my e-bike, and I'll be putting up a video to talk about that soon. Since I last rode it, I put the video up. Something I got for Christmas. Something I got for myself. So I hope to uh, get on an e-bike maybe in the next week or so. So the weather's supposed to sort of, sort of stay mild here in southeastern Pennsylvania for at least a few more days, maybe well into next week, which would be the first week of the new year. So we'll uh, hopefully be able to get out on the e-bike somewhere. I haven't decided where yet. Talk about it, do some riding. It's always fun to do that. I think you guys enjoy it too. At least I hope you do. Deciding whether I want to be a channel that features mainly e-bike riding, which there are some good channels out there. I watch that Russ is Right channel on occasion. He's like a really nice gentleman and he uh, lives in the Chicago area. And uh, he rides his bike pretty much all through the summer, spring, summer, and fall. Uh, and does just does videos of riding around the, the neighborhood, talking about e-bikes. And he's gotten so popular that e-bike manufacturers have been sending him samples to test on his channel. He's getting, getting so many requests now that he's just getting very picky about what he chooses to you know, receive and test for his channel. So that's not something... Uh, I'm, I, it might be something I want to do. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. With uh, my home-built e-bike, I don't know where I would put all these e-bikes if if manufacturer would start sending them to me. The the bike I built was from an old Trek 820 using a Bafang system. If you haven't seen my previous videos, swapping out the uh, the uh, the mid frame or the mid the pedal area. I forget what you call it now, where the crank is, with the e-bike motor, it's a 750 watt motor, and I bought a 48 volt battery, 15, I think it's 15.5 or 15 milliamp battery, milliamp hour, I guess is the way you pronounce it. Ooh, it's slippery here. Ooh. -hoo. All right, here we go. Uh, and I've been riding that and having a lot of fun. It's a good way to go if you're handy and can do it. I just had a bike. Uh, local bike shop remove the bottom bracket for me along with the pedals and, and the gear 
because sometimes you need special tooling for that. But I could buy it, but I would have probably only use it once. You know, it would just sit there. It would be like a waste of money. So I just paid them to remove it for a few bucks, and they they decided the chain needed to go because it was stretched. It was probably the original chain, and I bought the bike used. So they, they uh, put a new chain on it. Again, that was a minimal cost. And uh, so we got the bike in order to uh, be switched over to electric. And it works terrific. Can't say enough about it. Just that I can't ride it here because there are no bikes allowed. And I'm not sure we want to ride in all this mud anyway. I mean, it is waterproof, water resistant, but I don't want to get it too wet. All right, now this looks like it's the main road back to the parking lot. We'll see. Looks like it's heavily traveled with vehicles. Okay, I'm going to shut you down here. We'll be back in a second. Okay, so we have a truck parked here next to those hay bales. I don't know how he came in. I don't know where this road comes from. Looks like he's got off four wheel drive and it's jacked up. It's the suspension is jacked up. Gonna go over some pretty nasty terrain with that truck. How you doing? He's a hunter there. Looked like he had a rifle. I didn't think, uh, I thought it was only shotgun and archery. Or deer at this time of season, but I could have been wrong. If it's a rifle, then that's a little more concerning because they can they can get you from a long distance. You'd hope that most hunters are more responsible to take a shot at something that they're not sure what it is. But you never know. And it being so foggy, now I'm feeling a little less safe not wearing anything orange. So we're heading out, we're heading back now. Go look at that beautiful view over there. I say beautiful in a in a, in a foggy way. <laughs> it just looks so mysterious. It's pretty cool actually. There's a lot to see here in this area. I'm only just scratching the surface here with the trail I'm on now. So we plan on getting back here to do some more hikes. It's relatively close to where I live. If you've seen maybe some of my previous videos, if you go way back, you can see me touring the abandoned Emeryville State Hospital facility. That's right near the Chesham Preserve. It's actually right across the street. A lot of history there. And it was very interesting touring those buildings. They're gone now. They were torn down. They're going to build a, uh, some houses there. And the rest is going to be just open parkland, which is nice. But it was a urban explorer's dream when that was there. They were, they did have security over there for a while. They were stopping people from uh, going in there. But then in the later days when there was a uh, agreement close at hand for the owners to uh, build their houses and sell the rest of the property to the uh, township, they stopped patrolling it altogether. Then they began the big uh, removal of the asbestos. And that took a long time to do. I was over there in, well, actually not in the buildings, but what well, kind of was. But in the area of building I was in, they had already cleaned out the asbestos. 
It was just basically an open, open frame with no windows. But there were still areas there that were actively being cleaned out. So I kind of stayed away from those areas. But I was in the buildings before all that when all the asbestos was still there. So that might not have been wise, you know, with no mask on. But asbestos isn't really dangerous unless you stir it up. And you're breathing in the fibers, so hopefully that didn't occur because I did not stir it up. Well, just I'll tell you, this does feel good to get out. Stretch my legs a little bit. Haven't been doing a heck of a lot except maybe riding the e-bike on, on very rare occasions. I definitely have to do more of this. I'm not what, what you call an active YouTuber. I don't put up a video a week. I just don't know what to do to put up one video a week. But perhaps it'll be the e-bikes. We'll see. I think you guys will get tired of me just walking around nature preserves and doing videos like this. Uh, if not, let me know in the comments if you want to see more videos like this. I hope to get into areas that are more wild and we may see some wildlife, like up in Stony Valley. Come across some bears, perhaps. And again, coyotes. I want to see coyotes. And again, they're supposed to be here. But I may have to wait till nightfall. And unfortunately, this place closes at nightfall, I believe. Well, I don't know about now. It might stay open to 830, actually, which... You know, it would be nightfall here in the winter time, so something to consider. Well, that's a neat looking trail. They are going through the woods. But that'll be for another time. Even when it's less muddy. I think we're going to stick to the gravel road here and just head back. Right, we're going to cut you off. I might actually replace the battery at this point because I know I'm getting very low. We'll bring you back in a second. All right, fresh battery in. We are good to go for the rest of this trip. Now we come to a fork in the road. 
the left goes up to the house and the barn. Let's take a walk up there. Just to show you what they look like. Well, restricted area, posted, no trespassing. Okay. So, this is it. I guess as far as we're going to go. There wasn't a sign there last time I was over here. You can see there's a barn. You know, I want to go a little further. I'm really not done yet. Let's walk down here a bit. I'd like to get a, some of that front of that house on video too. Hopefully you can see it through the fog. see where people have been slipping and sliding here in the muck. Well, trying to stay on the side of the pathway where the, at least one leg is on the grass. on the other side of the marsh area what used to be the pond you can see the house up there Dr. Morris Stroud bequeathed his 332 acre Georgia farm to natural lands in 1990 establishing the Stroud Preserve since then, the preserve has grown in size through donations and purchases of neighboring properties. Prior to Dr. Stroud's ownership, the land was part of the Laird Farm, a massive cattle farm that stretched from the city of Westchester west to Wabaset Road. Now I can see why they wouldn't want bicyclists over here. It's, uh, it would really tear up the paths. A nice view of the house there. The preserve's history stretches as far back as the founding of the colony. The stone farmhouse built by Thomas Worth in 1740 is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Oh, so I'm going to turn around right here. I just wanted to get a video of the house here. Uh, at least get a, a little bit of a shot of it. And then we're going to head back toward that main gravel road. I'm going to turn you off for now. Then when we get back on that road, I'll turn you back on. Back on the main gravel road here. Heading back through the parking lot. Well, I tell you what, there's a few people here earlier. 
I think they stuck mainly to the, uh, the gravel road here. There was quite a few cars in that parking lot, but I didn't see that many people on our journey. And I still don't. We're feeling maybe uh, many of them left by now. The rain started to pick up a little bit. If you like the hike and you don't mind the rain, you throw on some rain gear. That's sometimes that's the best time to go on a hike. You can deal with the mud also. Uh, because you're not dealing with the people. Not that I don't like people, it's just... Uh, I just think it's better if uh, I'm more on my own. Some ways I like to get out here just to be alone for a little bit. Sometimes people don't like to be on camera. It's not common, but sometimes people wonder why is that guy talking to himself too. Although they, they see I have a camera. So just something to think about if you like to go on hikes. Sometimes the best weather isn't the best time. Hello, nice day for a hike, huh? Yeah, a little bit different the weather. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I will say most people you encounter on these hikes are very friendly, very nice people. Yeah, it's getting a lot wetter here now. Just sort of traverse around the mud puddles here. Rain has picked up since I entered. But the water looks nice and clear here in Brandywine Creek. Oh, that's all right. Hello. Hey, how you doing? It's just funny. I got to the house. Here we are at the parking lot. All right, folks. It's time to shut her down now. Uh, my channel just hit over 2,000 subscribers and uh, I'm really appreciative of that. I'm not a prolific YouTuber. I don't put up uh, YouTube videos once a week. I'd be lucky to put up one once a month. So that's saying something that I can actually accumulate that many subscribers uh, with uh, so few videos that I have. So I really, really appreciate you, you subscribing and uh, I want to wish you all a happy and prosperous new year. Tomorrow we'll start the new year and let's hope that it's, a, again, a prosperous one for all of you. And once again, if you do like this content, uh, don't hesitate to subscribe. It really does help the channel. And uh, if you like the particular, I can't even say the word particular, if you like the particular video, give it a thumbs up and that really does help uh, the, the channel. So once again, Happy New Year, folks, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.